Greetings and God's blessing. This is Father John Corapi with another episode of Weekly Wisdom. Uh, this week I'm going to talk to you about uh, something that I've, I've encountered and, and lived through um, many times. Uh, it's more common than you might think. The battle with addiction. Uh, I know many, many of you uh, have had uh, family members, children, parents, friends, whatever, who've had uh, various kinds of uh, addictions. And uh, so it's a very relevant topic. And I'm going to take the time to just uh, give you a, a, a brief presentation on some of my insights into it. Um, you know, w the first thing we can say, and uh, something that um, I'm sure you've, you'll, you've thought about or perhaps noticed with respect to, to either yourself or someone uh, who may be addicted to something, um, it takes away your freedom. Uh, Jesus came to set the captives free. Uh, that's the Word of God. That's right in the Bible. Jesus came to set the captives free. Now, they're all kind of captives, of course. Uh, Jesus, uh, in one place, says the man who sins becomes the slave of sin. So, of course, sin is one, one dimension, but there are others. There are other forms of captivity, uh, other forms of slave, slavery, physiological, uh, psychological, moral, spiritual. Let me read to you a few definitions. The, uh, isn't the internet a great thing? Uh, it's, it's a very helpful tool, has been used uh, a lot for evil, uh, but it's being used for good too. And uh, let me, uh, it, it, one of the things, doing research, um, it's so much easier now. You can, um, for instance, when I want to look up a, a word or I want to get uh, the world's definition of certain terms in order to have a point of departure, uh, I can uh, just put that in and do a search and uh, you, you get all kinds of things. So I put in uh, addiction uh, and did a Google search on it. And you come up with, um, from the web dictionary, all kinds of, um, uh, of definitions from different spheres of influence, whether psychology, sociology, and so forth. Let me read a few to you and, and just listen uh, to what they say about um, addiction. A physiological and psychological compulsion for a habit-forming substance. In extreme cases, an addiction can become an overwhelming compulsion. Another definition is that addiction is a primary chronic neurobiologic disease with genetic, psychosocial, and environmental factors influencing its development and manifestation. Note it, it affects everything. It's a primary uh, condition, uh, primary chronic uh, neurobiologic, it affects you uh, neurologically, biologically, it affects you physiologically, it affects you psychologically. And the part, of course, they never talk about is that it, it can affect you morally and spiritually as well. And we'll talk about that. We won't leave that out. Another definition said it's a state of being dependent on a certain substance. Now, the substance could be some drug, whether legal or illegal, could be alcohol, uh, could be food, uh, could be any number of, of things that you could be addicted to a certain kind of behavior. So it's a state of being dependent on a certain sub substance which is harmful or dangerous for the physical or mental health of the person, for the social well-being and economic functioning of the subject. So uh, that's a pretty good one, a state of being dependent on a certain substance. Now, this substance is harmful, dangerous to the physical or mental health of the person. And it's also uh, detrimental to the social well-being of the person, or the economic well-being of the person. Uh, another uh, definition, it's a disease influenced by genetic, psychological, social, and environmental factors that changes the normal way the nervous system works. Hmm. 
That's an interesting one too, a, a disease. No, no, many of these definitions say that, that addiction is a disease. A disease influenced by genetic, psychological, social, and environmental factors. And these factors change the normal way the nervous system works. So it becomes a very, very powerful uh, force. Uh, another one, psychological or emotional dependence on the effects of a certain substance. So you have all these definitions, and uh, they all provide a little glimpse uh, into this mystery uh, of addiction. Um, one thing we can say for sure, that addiction uh, affects the whole person. It's very common today. Uh, at an age, uh, in an age that prides itself on freedom, you know, we, we love freedom, and, and rightly so. Um, God did not create us for slavery of any kind. He created us for freedom. Of course, there is a tremendous lack of understanding today uh, about what freedom is. Um, ma matter of fact, the abuse of freedom is what uh, almost always leads to addiction. Um, that, that's one facet. That's not the only thing. There are all kinds of components to it. Uh, certainly, there could, there, with some things like alcohol, there could be a genetic component, a predisposition that's stronger in some people than others. I'm quite sure that's true. Um, that's not the only thing, though. Uh, there are many different components to it. Uh, it, it's very common today. I, I suppose um, um, doctoral theses could be written in sociology and, and psychology on um, the uh, dynamics uh, of addiction. Uh, it's a very, very important thing, and it's very, very um, detrimental to the individual human being, uh, certainly to the family, uh, to all of society. Jesus came to set the captives free. Uh, and this includes those who are enslaved physiologically, psychologically, uh, economically. Jesus came to set the captives free. God did not create us for slavery. Uh, God created us for freedom. Uh, in the Gospel of John, John Jesus said, um, you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Uh, knowing the truth, uh, facing the truth, acknowledging the truth is something that we, um, we really should um, strive to do, obviously. Um, and it's a first step. Uh, I find there are two equal um, elements here. Yes, you want to know the truth, because the truth is light. You can't see without light. So you want to know the truth. Uh, face the truth squarely, head on, honestly. Uh, humbly. Uh, there's a great connection between humility and truth. A person who is not basically a humble person or who, who is not willing to be a humble person will never really be able to see the truth. Um, they won't be able to hear the beautiful symphony of truth. Uh, they'll be blind. Uh, they'll live in darkness. And um, of course that's a, a catastrophe uh, both for individual human beings and for society uh, as a whole. So addiction is one of the ways we lose our human freedom. And this is truly essential. This is right at the core of Christianity. Uh, why did the Word become flesh and dwell among us? Why did Jesus, the eternal Word, God, assume a human nature and become like one of us in everything except sin? Well, redemption. You know, the term basically means a buying back, like a commercial transaction. We were sold into the slavery of sin. We were trapped. And, you know, without the redemptive work of Christ, you stay trapped. The gates of heaven were closed. No one could go to heaven. Uh, it, it was a very, very dark situation indeed. But uh, the Messiah came, the anointed one of God. That's Jesus. Anointed with what? The Holy Spirit the oil of gladness. And so Jesus came to set the captives free. But today, addiction has become so 
commonplace. I, I think you know, there's always a, a root. Um, these things are interconnected. You know, the physiological dimensions, which would include genetic component, psychological. Uh, that's not all, though. In addition, you have a moral dimension, you have a spiritual dimension. And, and each one of them, they don't operate in a vacuum, okay? They, they operate uh, interconnected. Uh, so you, you really can't treat these things or deal with them uh, in, in a vacuum. If you think all there is is the physiological dimension uh, and ignore everything else, uh, you're probably doomed to failure. Uh, you are doomed to failure. If all you recognize is the psychological or emotional dimension, uh, there certainly is a psychological dimension, just like there certainly is a physiological dimension. But you can't ex uh, concentrate on one to the exclusion of the others. They're all interconnected, compenetrated. And so you've got to take it as a whole. You've got to take the person as a whole. We, we are, uh, I might use... Uh, terms from metaphysics, we're, we're an ontological integrity. We have a physiological, psychological, moral, and spiritual dimension. Those dimensions are interconnected, and, and you can't uh, ignore one or more of them and hope to win. So, I'm going to mention uh, at this point, you know, that in, in most all addiction, there is a physiologic physiological dimension, for alcoholism, for instance. It certainly affects you physically. Uh, anyone who uh, is an alcoholic would tell you that. It, it has a profound effect on you physically. And it also has a profound effect on you emotionally. Now, what most people don't know uh, or won't acknowledge um, is that there's a profound moral uh, effect uh, of alcoholism or any uh, true addiction. It affects you morally. Um, you, you'll, you'll find you'll do things uh, when you are, uh, whatever the addiction is, whether it's a, a legal drug, uh, uh, painkillers, whether it's an illegal drug, cocaine, heroin, whether it's alcohol, it usually influences a, people, a, a person such that they will do things morally that they wouldn't have done otherwise. They maybe get violently angry. Uh, they may, they may uh, engage in um, immoral uh, behavior of other type. Well, uh, th that's commonplace. Um, and then spiritually, it, 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 it almost eviscerates you. It, it, it just empties you out to the point where it becomes very hard for you to put God first, neighbor second, and you last. It becomes very hard to love the Lord your God with your whole heart, mind, and strength if you're the center of your activity and your very being are, are, are centered on, on some substance. In effect, it's a form of idolatry. Uh, you really erect that substance, whether it be alcohol, cocaine, painkillers, um, any number of things. Uh, you could be addicted to, to stealing. Uh, some people, kleptomaniacs, you know, there's a, a kind of a, an addiction to taking things, stealing things. Um, and so that becomes the center of your universe after a while. And so not God. God isn't the center of your universe. This um, false God uh, that has been erected, uh, this, this idol that's been erected, takes the place of God um, with alcoholics. It's a progressive disease. It goes from bad to worse, inevitably. Inevitably, and, and pretty soon it consumes the individual, it becomes the center of the universe. We're, that, that's, we're made for God, and unless God is the center of our universe, we can't be happy. St. Augustine uh, said, our hearts are restless, O Lord, until they rest in thee. And so uh, we really ha have to have God first. Now, I'm going to go through... Um, the 12 steps from Alcoholics Anonymous. Now, you may say, look, I'm not an alcoholic. Um, why would I have to hear that? Oh, it's, it's, it's very instructive uh, for everybody. And, and many, many people, I would even dare say most people, are addicted to something. 
Um, if you're overweight significantly, um, then you probably have a kind of an addiction to food or eating that's unhealthy. Uh, and if you don't believe me, then stop and lose the 40 pounds you need to lose, or the 10 pounds, you know, and see how easy or how difficult that is. That's the test. If you say, look, I'm not addicted to this, that, is, oh yeah, stop it then. Just be honest. Say, okay, I'll stop it. And, and if you can, without any difficulty whatsoever, then maybe, indeed, you, you don't have an addiction to, uh, to uh, whatever it is. Um, maybe food, maybe alcohol, maybe uh, drugs, legal or illegal, a certain kind of behavior that's destructive. Um, and so you have to be honest about it. But going through the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous, is, it's a, it gives you great insight. Uh, into a lot of different, um, what I would call, um, um, oh, attachments uh, that are not healthy. We can, we can have an, un uh, an unhealthy attachment to all kinds of created things, which uh, in the end takes us away from the one thing we should be attached to, and that's God. Uh, Alcoholics Anonymous uh, says that we, we admitted we were powerless over alcohol. Now, you may feel you're powerless over food. You know, uh, you say, look, I, I had to admit at a certain point because I just kept gaining weight and gaining weight. You know, my blood pressure went up. My heart rate went up. I got diabetes. I began to get all kinds of other things. Uh, and at a certain point, I had to stop and, and realize what I was doing to myself. And so that first step, we admitted we were powerless over what it is, whatever it is that you're addicted to. Maybe alcohol, maybe food. We admitted we were powerless over this substance and that our lives had become unmanageable. That's the first step in the 12-step program. Um, many of us, uh, uh, ourselves or loved ones, uh, we, we know there's an addiction there. That's, that's the first step, honesty. We admitted we were powerless over this material and that our lives had become unmanageable. Secondly, we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Now, note that it, it, it's stating outright that this is insane. When you become so attached to a, a created good, a substance, alcohol, drugs, food, whatever it is, when you become inordinately attached to this, uh, you, you, you realize you're powerless after a point, if you're honest. And um, you have to come to believe that there's a power greater than ourselves. You know, that for us, that's God, of course. That's the, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, we came to believe that this power greater than ourselves could in fact restore us to sanity. Listen, God is your Father, right? God's our Father. We say that in, in the Lord's Prayer, our Father. God is our Father, and He's all-powerful by definition. God can restore you to sanity. He can bring back uh, th that kind of um, good common sense in dealing with any created thing. Look, if you're, if you're way overweight, and, and this, our country is becoming increasingly obese, and it's causing all kinds of physical and psychological problems, we're out of control. Well, God can restore us to sanity. That's a fact. And number three, we made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood Him. Uh, you know, at a certain point, you realize maybe your life is out of con control. You're, you're addicted to something. Well, you make a decision. That's one of the great things. The two highest faculties of a human being are intellect and will. And that decision concerns the will. We make a decision. A, a, love is a decision. It's an act of the will. We make a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God. Entrust yourself to God as we understand Him. Uh, four, we made a searching and fearless 
moral inventory of ourselves. Uh, it takes a lot of humility, a lot of honesty to do that. Make a searching, take a piece of paper if you have to, and write it down. Make a searching and fearless, fearless, moral inventory of ourselves. Uh, have you hurt other people? Have you neglected your health? Uh, and so forth. You make that moral inventory. And then five, we admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. Um, in a kind of a, an, an analogical sense, it reminds us of confession. Uh, we go to confession, and who do you confess your sins to? God. You're confessing your sins to God through the ministry of the priest, yes. But uh, note the, the process here. Uh, we admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being, the priest, the exact nature of our wrongs. Now, not everybody's Catholic. Not everybody has a, a recourse to the sacrament of, of confession or reconciliation. And so they, but they recognize in the 12-step program, and by the way, the 12-step program of Alcoholics Anonymous basically is the only thing that works for alcoholics. They've found that over time. Yeah, you know, people think, oh, they can do it some other way. It, 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 the other way doesn't work. <laughs> Inevitably, this works. It's been around for a long time, and it in fact works. If, if anything's going to work, this will work. And it's not just alcohol you know, addiction to anything. It's the principles that matter. So we admit to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. Boy, if that doesn't describe the sacrament of confession, right? And if you don't have confession, you go through that process. Anyway, admit to God, to yourself. Be honest. God knows anyway. But admit it to God, to yourself, and to another human being. God didn't create us to live in a vacuum. We have to have some social contact. We have to have help from other people at some time or another. The one who doesn't want you to have that help is the devil. He wants to get you off in a corner by yourself where you're all alone and he can work on you. Number six, we were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects from our character. I guess that, that, that's kind of right at the crux of it, isn't it? We were entirely ready. If you're not entirely ready, uh, I guess you won't do it. But we were entirely ready to have God. Now note that it's God who removes these defects. We can't remove them ourselves. You know, some things are beyond a, a, a human being's power. If you're up to your neck in quicksand, <laughs> how are you going to get yourself out? You're not. You're not. You're going you're to die. Um, but someone from the outside can throw us a lifeline. Someone from the outside can pull us out. We were entirely ready to have God, who can do all things, you know, for man it's impossible, for God all things are possible. We were entirely ready. I think that's the operative words there. We were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of our character. Seven, we humbly asked him to remove our shortcomings. Note the, the, the progression. Number one, we were entirely ready. And number two, we humbly asked him. Humility is, is right at the crux of this. Um, uh, you, in so many ways, we have to cultivate the virtue of humility. Uh, there, there may be many definitions of the term, but the one I like the best comes from the saints, where humility is the acknowledgement of the truth. The truth. Uh, and we see this in these, these initial steps of the 12-step program, what we're doing is we're being humble here. We're acknowledging we can't do it. We're powerless, helpless. We turn to God, who can do all things. That's humility. Uh, the acknowledgement of the truth. What truth? The truth that God's bigger than me. 
truth that God can do all things, and I can't. I can't. Um, that's a hard thing for many people to come to, especially today in, in this generation of, uh, of assertiveness and, uh, and, and, and imagining that we're the source of our own glory. We can't take our next breath without God, much less uh, free ourselves from the shackles and the slavery uh, of addiction. And so, we were entirely ready to have God remove these defects from our character, and then we humbly asked him uh, to remove these shortcomings. Eight, we made a list of all persons. Now, it's important to go through the process. You know, if, if your problem's eating too much, and, and you've become harm, to a dangerously overweight, and that can be 20 pounds for some people, 40, 50, 100 pounds. You, be, you become overweight to the point where you're truly, truly imperiling your very life. Well, it's bad enough to do that to yourself, but, but what about your, your family? Hmm? What about your husband? What about your wife? What about your children? You're killing yourself. You're, you're committing a sin against the fifth commandment, by the way. So we make a list of all persons we have harmed, and we become willing to make amends to them all. Uh, people that are addicted to alcohol and drugs, it, it's a progression, you know, it's a progressive uh, a disease. And over the course of that progression, oh, people, um, all kinds of things. They lose their wives, husbands, they lose their children, they lose their ability to drive, they get uh, DUIs, they can't drive anymore, they can't get to work, they lose their job. It just goes from bad to worse. You make a list of all the people you harmed, and then make amends to all of them. Be willing to make those amends. Nine, make direct amends to such people wherever possible. Sometimes it's not possible. But when it's possible, um, make direct amends. And, um, but sometimes you can't because uh, to do so would injure them or others. Um, kind of a mystery here. It is not always in a person's best interest uh, or the other person's best interest to, to, to reveal everything. Um, sometimes uh, it, the amends should be made as best you can spiritually uh, when, when you can't do it um, openly. Um, and, and you can pray for the person, or have, offer mass for them, pray the rosary for them, um, so you make direct amends to such people where possible, except when to do so would injure them uh, or others. Um, number 10, take, con to continue to take personal inventory, and when we are wrong, promptly admit it. Now look, you've got to work this. Uh, if you're addicted to something, alcohol or, or food or whatever it is, you've got to work this 12-step program. You don't just go through it once and that's the end of it. Uh, you, you've got to find a way to, to work the program. Do it every day. Look at it. Review it as a prayer. I incorporate it into your prayer life because it, it really is, does have a spiritual uh, dimension to it. Um, and so we continue to take personal inventory. And when you're wrong, promptly admit it. Eleven. We sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. You know, that's the best prayer. There's so much wisdom in this 12-step program. It's very, very Catholic and Christian, very spiritual. Um, You've got to pray. You know, you, you seek God through prayer. And meditation. I, I, would, I would say for us, for Catholics, pray the rosary every day. Um, consider it to be like eating. Uh, if you don't eat, your resistance can get run down and uh, you'll get weak and most likely you'll get sick. Get sick enough, you die. Um, do not neglect to pray and pray the rosary every day. Maybe you like the chaplet of divine mercy, all right. 
But pray a simple prayer like that every single day. Don't slip on it. Don't let it go because if you do, the enemy is going to be right over your shoulder. You're going to get weak and you're going to fall on your face. You need to have strength every day to do this. And 12, having had a spiritual awakening as the result of these steps, we tried to carry this message to alcoholics or to other people, people who, who are uh, trapped uh, in some slavery to some created good, and to practice these principles in all our affairs. This is good of advice. I, I highly recommend this 12-step program for, for anyone who has an inordinate, unbalanced attachment, uh, which we could call an addiction, to anything, whatever it is, drugs, alcohol, food, uh, any number of things that you are enslaved to. And so work the, the 12 steps, uh, and, and it can really help you. Now, uh, in the next session, we're going to fill, finish uh, this little um, synthesis concerning uh, the battle with addiction. Until then, God bless you, God love you, and goodbye.